All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight for the student advocate meeting. Um, my name is Toyin. I'm the chair of the fundraising committee. Um, I wanted to introduce Shanisha McMillan, who's our new uh, student rep on the board of uh, trustees. So Shanisha, I'm going to have you introduce yourself briefly. Um, tell us a little bit about your um, past experience, what school you come from. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Shanisha McMillan. I go to University of Maryland, Baltimore. Uh, if you're a previous advocate, you would probably recognize me. I've been an advocate, student advocate, since um, my first year, actually. I'm my, in my senior year now. Um, so I transitioned over to the student rep to the Board of Trustees. You said experience, like as in um, fundraising, Toyin? Or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Or oh, okay. Facts about you. Oh, okay. Uh, facts about me. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a proud New Englander. Um, I have um, extensive experience in fundraising. I've been doing it for, geez, dating myself. Not that I'm that old. Since like 2009. Yeah, 2009 and now it's 2023 and various capacities. This is, might be the largest scale that I've done it on though, serving on the board of trustees. Nice to meet you all. Well, thank you, Shanisha, uh, for that wonderful introduction. And we appreciate you having, we'll, we appreciate having you on the um, Board of Trustees now. Um, I want to remind all student advocates that everyone is assigned a Board of Trustees mentor. So when you can try to reach out to them and um, just connect with them, you know, we want, we want to be resources for you all. And um, we're busy people, but if you reach out to us once, if we don't respond or forget to get back to you, just you know, make sure you do it again. I promise it's an oversight and it's not intentional. And we want this program to be beneficial for you all. And we want to spread awareness about the foundation um, you know, through your classmates. So as we move on on the agenda, um, student advocate program updates. So we currently have 45 student advocates. Uh, Recently, we had 12, um, congratulations to the 12 student advocates that we had graduate, and we have three students that will be graduating before the end of the year. Um, a reminder, fall applications were due on the 31st, so we will be uh, welcoming a new group of student advocates. If you are, if you are gonna graduate soon, um, like in May, try to identify your replacement and um, send us an email telling us your recommendation because we trust your recommendation um, versus just looking at an application. So we, we really want you guys to start thinking about your re replacement and who you think will serve in the role well. Um, the, student the student application is online and it can found, be found at the anafoundation.com. The next deadline is March 31st. So please re remind people or F your fellow SRNAs to apply. All right, a recap of fiscal year 2023. Um, we had a very successful uh, fiscal year. Our annual goal was $418,000. We raised $637,000. That's 153%. So I want to thank everyone who um, participated in any way, big or small. We really appreciate it. Little efforts make a big difference. Our other giving goal was $335,000, and we raised almost $1.5 million. So that's 428,000%. So once again, we had a very, very successful year. We did receive a very large donation um, from someone who passed. So um, that really, um, you know, uh, that really increased our uh, donations received. We've included a link to this year's annual report for a complete recap of fiscal year 23 and our many successes. In addition to the electronic version, we've printed um, versions of the annual report and we've sent them to all of our donors. If you would like a printed version for any reason, personally or for an upcoming state conference, just reach out to us and um, we will make sure to give to give you to send you copies. So you can reach out to Luann or Alessa. Now I'll hand it over to Luann. Great. Thanks, Joanne. Um, next on our agenda is our program update for FY24. First of all, I'd like to share a, a little bit about the FY24 board and staff. 
Alyssa, if you want, you can go ahead and open up that picture of the board. Um, let's see, what do we have there? Is it? Oh, well, um, in, oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, there we go. That's a, a oh, well, there's the a photo of the board that when we were together um, recently, not everyone is included, but we have four new board members. We have Mike Greco, Shanisha McMillan, who is our student rep. Stephen Stull, he is one of two public members, and uh, Janet Setner, she is the AANA president-elect, and the AANA president-elect is always on our board the year before they're going to be chair. So it's wonderful for us because we really get a chance to know them. Um, so we have a great board. I believe it's 14 individuals all together, and we have one of our members joining us today, and that's Yana um, Kermick. And if she is available right now, I would love it if she introduced herself and um, would share a little. Yana, are you on? Yep, I'm on. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, please. Oh, so nice. Thank you so much. It's always great to attend these meetings and kind of meet everybody. And I just in the chat actually added my uh, phone number for any advocates that willing to you know just to connect and wanted to connect um and chat a little bit about advocacy in general please reach out to me my my cell phone at any time text or or call and then we can connect um i live in new york um i have a variety of leadership experiences as well as fundraising experiences i'm extremely excited to be part of the a a foundation i'm very passionate about uh, fundraising and about advocacy for our wonderful profession. I thank you all for what you do already, even as residents. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with you in the future and um, and really just giving you that um, passion and vision to inspire you to move forward and advocate for our great profession. So thank you for, for having me here. Thank you so much, Yana. Um, the pick, the Alyssa clicked on our page, the board members listed there, and each of our board members individually are listed there with their photos. So um, please check that out prior to meetings. When you go to meetings, um, you know, get to know these people and look for them. And as, um, as we just mentioned, really connect with our board. They are so excited to have you as part of our team that is spreading the word about the foundation and the good work we do. And um, not only that, but they also want to welcome you to the profession and assist you in any way they can. So please take advantage of that. It is truly for those who really get connected with the profession at the level, at the foundation level or at the AANA at the national level. Um, it's really a great experience and um, it's just a wonderful community. So we're glad to have you as part of that community. <clears throat> Um, also, next on our list for FY24 are our program application deadlines. Um, we've included lots of links in the agenda, so you can click on that link and you'll see all of the upcoming deadlines for the year. And um, please pass this information along to your fellow students, uh, especially things that have to do with student deadlines. Um, for instance, the most important student deadline of the year is probably March 1st, which is when student scholarship applications are due. Um, I guess that's the most important, followed by um, poster application deadlines, which are in May, May 1st. So take a look at that calendar. And as we go along, after each of these meetings, we'll send you a, an update that you can share with your fellow students. And we'll always point out and link to those applications that we'd like you to get the word out about and share. Um, next, we have the uh, Student Advocate Program. Um, Toyin talked about this already. Um, we're just going to be welcoming a brand new batch of student advocates. I think we have oh, probably around 15 individuals who um, uh, will be coming on board and that process is in process right now. So at our next meeting, we'll have new, new students to introduce you to. Research grant deadline is coming up. They're due on a quarterly basis. So it doesn't really matter when in the year, but there's always a, a, you know, every quarter there's a new deadline date where 
uh, grants are being reviewed. Um, coming up, it's December 31st. And then finally, the SEAS program, Student, Emer Student Emergency Educational Scholarships. That application is open all year long, and it's for students who um, are in dire need because of a crisis of some sort, be it something personal or a natural disaster that they're involved in. So if you or someone you know is facing something um, like this, please check it out and apply. Now I'd like to go and move on to our FY24 meetings and events. Um, coming up is ADCE, the Assembly of Didactic and Clinical Educators. We hope that some of you plan to be there. And if you are planning to be there and um, would like to assist the foundation and apply for the student sponsorship, um, please let us know. Uh, we had we have a couple things um, still in the works. We had a fundraising event that we were going to move forward with, but we've decided to um, we're not going to do that at this time. So we're in the process of looking for another really exciting and fun fundraising idea that we can host at the booth and um, get everyone excited about at ADCE. Um, we'll talk. I'm going to open that up to talk about that in the, in a moment or two. Um, um, but for now, I just wanted to get you thinking about that. Also at ADCE, we have two foundation lunches taking place. Uh, one is tricks of the trade when submitting and reviewing abstract applications. And this is more for um, people, um, teachers and clinicians that are working with students to um, help us help you put together um, top-notch abstracts so that when you apply to present your poster, it's accepted. That's one of the luncheons on Friday, and then we also have a program director's lunch hot topics on Saturday. Um, and then also this year coming up is 2024 Annual Congress, and that is save the date for our upcoming event, and that's going to be held on Sunday, August 4th. And we're currently looking for ideas of where to host that. Uh, so um, we would re really like to gather some input from you. We're really, the board is really working hard to do things differently and be more um, all-encompassing with our events. I know the ticket price in the past for our annual Congress event is $250, but we've always had a either an after nine party or a different level uh, for students. So students can purchase a half price ticket, which is like at 125, but we also have had that after nine for a $25 donation uh, that students could join. But um, I'd really like to open it up to talk to you and ask you what types of events do you like to, to attend? Um, how much would you be willing to donate or pay to attend? Um, uh, let's see, what are my, a few other questions. Um, how would you, what ideas do you have for getting fellow students to attend? So I know it's hard. I'm sort of putting you on the spot right now. I'll call, I'm going to open it up for anyone who has ideas, but I'm also, um, you know, feel free to throw things in the chat or email us later. So, but Ari, I think you have your hand up. So please go ahead. Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I think the luncheon is great. Um, I know you're talking about like donation things, but maybe even some sort of happy hour, or if we don't want it to be based around alcohol, like, you know, soft drinks and small snacks to get students to mingle. Because I think when everybody goes, when they get to see other students and mingle with them, it's, it's a lot more motivating to go when you get to hang out with other students. Um, a lot of people in my program, though, unfortunately, have expressed to me that just like the price overall is very high. So I don't know if there's even like scholarships that we can release, at least for the ticket price itself, and then have students donate for like the after nine type events or something like that. But a lot of students, even last year when they saw that I went with being in so involved with like the foundation, they were like, I would have loved to go. But I if I buy the plane ticket, you know, for example, mine was 750 round trip. I just can't afford that ticket. And then all the associated things with it for the Uber and the lodging and such.
Yes, thank you. That is a good point. We do know cost is an issue. So maybe we do need to start. I know we have a sponsor student program at AANA, um, but that's for the overall when you register for a meeting and you may be chosen for that, but you don't find out till after the meeting. But maybe based on this conversation, knowing that is true, maybe there is some kind of a pool we can ask CRNAs to fund for students who are interested in attending our events. Maybe there's something like that that we can do. So, um, so it's, it's to cover the fun side of things. So thanks, Ari. Um, someone else had their hand up. I see Janine now, but there was someone else. Janine, why don't you go and then we'll go yep. back. Sure. Hey guys. Um, so I just wanted to mention I had been um, there the last two years, so Seattle and Chicago. And as far as the, I don't know how to overcome this obstacle, but I do recall both years, there was like a one of the bigger events that the residents got invited to. Um, they usually have one of the company, anesthesia companies has one every night, but one of the bigger ones both years was on the night of um, of that fundraising event. So I don't know if you could maybe be in touch with the residents and hear like what emails we're getting. Cause I know that my friends, uh, my peers, like they always kind of want to go to that. So it is hard to get other residents to come uh, on certain nights. That was just something I thought about. That is an excellent idea. I mean, that's an excellent point. And we did learn that there are conflicting events that are crossing with ours. And that explains it because there have been years where we've sold student advocate after nine tickets for $25, but the nine o'clock comes and the people never showed. Well, if they're at another event and already in full swing there, then um, yeah, that is competition. So we are definitely, can definitely try to keep that in mind and we definitely don't want that happening so we'll do we're doing what we can just that as you know the meeting there's so few nights and everybody you know is jockeying for their um place to host and to hold events but i really appreciate that comment janine and um we will take that into consideration when we're talking with our with our team and thinking about what we want to do and what we can do better um, let's see, there is a hand up. This is, I have my um, go ahead. I, I cannot read, I can't see whose hand is up. So whose hand is that? Um, Haley Somberg. Hi Haley, please Hi. go ahead. Um, so this kind of piggybacks on what Ari was saying and kind of the conversation to follow, but I was just at the NCANI conference and um, they had a paid event and they encouraged the CRNAs in attendance to buy student tickets because they pretty much knew kind of like Ari was saying, you know, we're we're already paying to be there and, you know, we aren't working for three years. A lot of us just don't have that extra 100, 150 to go to those events, although we really like to. So as CRNAs bought tickets for students, every break they would announce, hey, we have four student tickets. If whatever students want to come claim them, come get them. Um, and it was just something that they encouraged the people that I know bought them in person. They were like, hey, would you be interested in an extra $100 for a student? And a lot of them said yes. So I think that that really opened up an opportunity for a lot of students to attend that event. I love that idea. Thank you very much. Um, another great idea. Even if we compiled a list as we went along and students left their number, when tickets came available or we could be telling people we've got 10 students interested in going would you underwrite someone and um, um one other question on that Haley did they link you with your donor in any way like the person who sponsored or did they recognize those sponsors in any way to my knowledge no um but I personally had another event I was not able to attend so I'm not sure I can reach out to a couple of my classmates and ask if they were told who their sponsor was, but I'm, I, I believe they just kind of compiled the extra tickets and they yeah. handed them out until they were gone. But that and would that, be a good idea. That's we great too. Could and potentially we could, encourage people. We can, yeah, we could definitely figure out a way to recognize people because I think that just adds another level of, 
you know, connection or something like that. We could have maybe everyone stand who sponsored a student or, or something. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, is there another hand up? Anyone else? Any other comments on this topic? Okay, well, if you think of anything, please know that we are wanting to connect. I definitely like the idea of doing like a happy hour, soft drinks or snacks or a student mixer sponsored by the foundation. Once again, finding time is something, but we can always find time. We can just try to, we can work harder to find time. So, um, all great ideas. If you have others, keep them coming. Um, and now on to the sort of the other part of our question that I wanted to get your input in. Um, for ADCE, as I said, we're not hosting an event in Orlando, but we are trying to come up with any kind of um, fun interaction to get people at the booth. Um, if you, if that's something that you can come up to, you know, we've done the Team Miller Team Mac in the past, and that's been successful. And a lot of people like that. And um, if there's anything else you think students would be interested in and that would draw them to the booth, anything you've done at a meeting that you think, oh, that would be fun, um, let us know. Oh, Shanisha says, is there a way to do a game? That's a question. And yes, I, I um, have done something similar and seen something similar. So um we can work on something like that if anybody else has seen that work or has seen that in action please um feel free to share that information with us um finally then i think that's all for now but like i said keep your keep thinking about things um Another thing we can do, ADCE, I'm not sure how many of you are attending. If anyone is attending ADCE, could you put that in the chat? Um, I'd just be curious to know. It's in Orlando in February. Um, and we do know that more student advocates come to our, oh, Savannah's coming. Janine's trying to, great. Um, um, we know that there will probably be more people at annual Congress, so um, we could also be thinking about a way how we can have our, like, wouldn't it be nice if our student advocates hosted some kind of a foundation gathering in conjunction, you know, with, underneath the, the foundation, um, rather than the foundation hosting it, you know, students who are going to be attending the meeting who are foundation reps could reach out to fellow students. So um, just more to think about. Ari too is, is, not, is, is trying to. So great. We're hoping that several of you or many of you are able to come to ADCE and help us out with whatever it is we decide to do it. And um, as our is our little, our fun thing to get thing and get, to get people engaged and coming over to the booth and talking and everything else. Uh, so once again, thanks for your input. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Alyssa. Great, thanks so much, Luann. All right, um, I'm gonna speak a little bit about student advocate meeting sponsorship. Um, so, as we discussed, um, student advocate meeting sponsorship are $1,000 sponsorships for student advocates who assist and participate with the foundation at AANA national meetings. Um, and the way that they work is you can contact me um, and Luann at least a month before the meeting if you're attending and applying for the sponsorship. And then we will get back to you closer to the meeting with suggested opportunities. You're going to attend the meeting, assist at the foundation booth, take advantage of prevalent um, foundation activities, um, and then um, complete and submit the student advocate meeting sponsorship app and addendum following the meeting. Once reviewed and approved, you'll receive your $1,000 sponsorship check in the mail. Um, some details on this, you must participate and attend the entire meeting to be eligible for the sponsorship. Each student advocate will only be eligible for the meeting sponsorship during, once during their time um, as a student advocate. And if sponsorships are in high demand and reaching capacity, preference will be given to those student advocates who serve longest in the program. 
Um, and then I heard a few people are uh, going to try to attend ADCE with us, which we're looking forward to. Um, and just send me an official confirmation email saying, you know, I am attending ADCE and I am going to seek meeting sponsorship um, if that's what you're going to um, move forward with doing. All right. Um, number seven, outreach to your classmates. So here we have our fresh and new FY24 um, student advocate full presentation. And for this year, we have a new shortened advocate um, presentation. Um, so one of the really important things that we ask student advocates to do in this role is um, uh, give out information about the foundation to your classmates and give a presentation um, to your peers. Um, so some people have already done this um, in the past um, and, and they've done it in different ways. Some people give a live presentation, some record a video of themselves and have emailed that out. Um, and now we have a long presentation and a short presentation option for you guys to choose from. Um, so um, if you guys have any questions on that, also let us know. But those links are there and they'll be sent out with the, ad uh, with the agenda. And then social media here. We have our links um, here to follow us on social media. Um, with um, Giving Tuesday coming up, we're going to be doing a push uh, Giving Tuesday push, where we are asking people to basically um, make a donation of any size to the foundation and then share a little graphic saying that you've done so and challenge um, some other people to do the same. Um, so keep an eye out for that and all of our upcoming posts around the holidays. Um, and please like, comment, and share. We appreciate your support and help us. It helps us spread the words about the foundation and our programs. So. I'm going to pass it off to Shanisha now. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to discuss the ways to donate to the AANA Foundation. When we are out and about and we're representing the foundation, some of you may want to share information on how to donate to the AANA Foundation. And we have a variety of options and donation avenues. So I'm going to walk through uh, some of those ways with you. You can go to the foundation website at www.aanafoundation.com. There's also a web page titled Ways to Give. And then there's a secure donation page. Text to donate is always a lovely option. It's easy for members to access and donate. All they have to do is text CRNA to 41444 for the annual fund and text SRNA to 41444 for the CS fund. Our lovely Team Mac versus Team Miller fundraiser has been such a huge success. For participating student advocates, the final rounds of stickers have been mailed. The winning team program and highest dollar amount raised will be announced in January 2024. If you have any questions, please email Alyssa at afitchgerald at aana.com. For next steps, distribute the fall update to others in your program. It will be sent out by Alyssa and uh, Luann. It'll come to your email. And um, with the fall update, you usually just have to tweak it just a tiny bit by adding your picture and at the bottom and your contact information. It's very easy. Register for ADCE if you will be attending and assisting. Contact Alyssa and Luann if you will be applying for the student advocate membership. Um, sponsorship, and that is, I think, a month beforehand. Consider donating an auction item or sharing a fundraising idea. Contact Luann or Alyssa. Make your FY24 donation to the AANA Foundation. Students' donations of $25 plus are recognized in the annual report. It's always good to see your name in there. I always keep copies so that I have that reminder of my donation. Next, I'm going to pass it on to Luann. All right. Yes. Just uh, wanted to let everyone know we have here listed the dates of our upcoming quarterly meetings this year, um, February 5th, May 6th, and July 23rd. We have the annual Congress is early this year. So instead of an August meeting, our final meeting will be in July. So um, uh, that's the plan. Uh, we will send out our information uh, meeting follow-up after this meeting, um, either this week or early next week. And um, that's all we had for tonight. So um, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. I was just wondering, though, before we take off, if um, the 
board members who are on the call could stay on and Alyssa, like Toya and Alyssa, um, Shanisha and maybe Yana, if you don't mind. But other than that, um, I will open it up to questions though, before we hang up. Any final thoughts, questions, comments from anyone? All right, well, thank you all so much for spending your time with us. I know it's precious, so have a good night and you will be hearing more from us soon. And thanks for all the great feedback. Keep it coming. Any ideas are welcome. Good Alyssa, night, if you, good yes, good night. Alyssa, you can stop the recording if you'd like. Yes, I'm working on it. Okay, great. <laughs>